Secret Family Recipes, the cookbook. And let me tell you about this. We have a 105-year-old eggnog from Noreen Havarella. We have people in the East, Midwest, and West Coast who've given their secret family recipes. Maybe in the future, you might want to put one in our next issue. And my email is T-I-T-O-T-O dot love, spelled L-U-V, at Verizon dot net. One third of this book are food tips. One third is what type of spice, salt, the pepper, gabis, bon appetit. And one third are wine quiz questions and answer. You can email me at T-I-T-O dot L-U-V at Verizon dot net. Bon appetit. I'm mad as hell and I'm not going to take it anymore. I'm your host, Tito Love. We're going to talk about smoke marijuana if you've never smoked it before. Loan modification companies uh, out there taking people's money and then not doing anything. Me now that I'm gay and I'm out openly with my family, I still cared about what people thought about me. Listen to me, listen to the guests, and make your own opinion. And I'm, I'm mad, mad as hell, hell and I'm not going to take it anymore. Hi, folks. We're back, and I have Tito Love here today. And we're mad as hell. And we're, and we're not, not going to take, take it anymore. It. He has a wonderful mafia mystery called The Dish Served Cold that we're going to talk about today. It's one of his newest books. And, uh, Tito, uh, you know, how do you know anything about the mafia? Do you even write a book? Mamma mia! Go sale succede! Which means, what's the matter you? I don't know any. <laughs> Is that from Rocky and Bullwinkle? <laughs> Isn't he cute? No. It's from my family. Well, here's what's going on. I wanted to write a book, a serious book, about corporations. And when I say corporations, I mean the Italian, Irish, Mexican, Black, Chinese triads. There are crime syndicates all through the world. Mm -hmm. This book takes you from Riverside, California. Hey, like there's mafia in there. Oh, yes, there is. It takes you up to the mountains of Lake Arrowhead, Big Bear, Arrow Bear, which is right next to Running Springs. And then it goes to Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, New York, and then it goes to Italy and Sicily. Sounds more like a book about travel. <laughs> it is a book about travel. And but it's a great mystery story. Can you give me you know a little what? synopsis it, it, of the it, it, mystery? Okay. For the benefit of our viewers. <laughs> the names, and I'm not going to tell you the names, because the, the names in the book are so dynamic. They're going to blow your mind. You're going to want to see it from that. Oh, you just changed them to protect the innocent. Or the guilty. You want to go to Amazon.com? You want to go to Border? Talk to me. What if I have to? Uh -huh. It's a great book. It starts with crime. I know in a mafia book, crime. Hey. But it starts in Riverside, and it goes to the mountains, Running Springs, Lake Area. But Big we don't Bear. want to know what the places are. What's the story about? The story is about all these mafias that can't get along. And then you have fanaticals who are going to blow up New York City, and they're going to blow up Las Vegas. So the FBI and the CIA, the government, is trying desperately to stop them. I know. Are there main characters? Oh, yeah. Are you kidding me? Mm hmm I don't want to tell you their names. You know why? Their names were so well thought out and so eloquent. When you see them, I mean, the women are tasty. They're hot moments. You're going to fall in love with them. But I'm not going to... Listen. In the beginning of the book, it tells you about like all these neat names of who you're going to see. The ghastly sight of the battered body lying alone in the winery's discolored floor was horrible to say the least. Listen, the names I came up with, it took me like maybe a month to think of all the mm -hmm. names. That's how neat the women and the women are desirable, they're tasty, they're fair. Well, this one I think what you, you're talking about uh, perhaps a movie being made of in the future yeah, as well. Yeah, we're talking to a, 
if you want to get in on this. Now, why did where did the name come from? Uh, what's you know what's a well, cold, an old, what's a cold dish all about? There's an old Sicilian saying that a uh, life is served on a dish served cold. I thought it was revenge. You know what? I got to tell the truth. It is. I tried to gaff and get by, but my old friend. It is. Revenge is served on a dish served cold, and I. And what a, exactly does that mean? Well, if you do bad to me, that's like presenting a presentation on a dish. I'm going to get you. I'm going to maim you, hurt you, or kill you. Mm -hmm. And this has the Chinese triads, the black mafia, the Chinese triads or or yusuke or or uh the tongs and it has the irish mafia and the jewish mafia this is a realistic book this is i mean the story is wonderful and it has i mean i can't say the names i wrote those names so specifically that people would fall in love with if i tell you it's well if you had to tell me in one sentence about the storyline though with the main characters what would it be it's realistic what happens every day all over our country and then internationally. Oh, well, that's great. A Dish Served Cold, that's a book you want to buy. It has great love And scenes. how did they find this book if they'd be, they're be they interested in purchasing well, a copy? Well, if you go to W... If they like to read mysteries. <laughs> and you do like that. It's at www.amazon.com. Amazon sells it. You, and listen, you can't lose with this. And they look up... Tito Love, T-I-T-O, L-U-V. And I'm cool, cool Tito. If you spell Tito, they don't have cool Tito on Amazon. Name. Don't look for it. If you ask for the spell Tito backwards, you'll never. Who are you talking to? I'm talking to anybody who'll listen. <laughs> anybody. People don't listen to me. I try to have all this stuff and stuff. Oh, uh, they so listen already. Uh -huh. They don't listen. But I want to let you know a dish served cold by Tito Love. Shown on the program, I'm mad that as is hell, hell, and, and we're not, not going to take, take it, it anymore. Don't, don't push us. So if you love mysteries, don't this is us. a great mystery book, and look for it on Amazon. Hi, everyone. Frank Anthony on the floor of GlamourCon 50 in Long Beach, California, for the Telesystems Television Network. Our guest today is adult film star Tara Patrick. Tara, thank you so much for stopping a visit with us. You're very welcome. Now, I understand this is your second GlamourCon. Do you enjoy interacting with your fans like this? Absolutely. Uh, my first GlamourCon was in 2007 in Los Angeles, and we're here at the 50th uh, in Long Beach, California. And I do. I do lots of personal appearances, so it's always good. Now, you're one of the first adult film stars who can actually transform into mainstream cinema. Is that something you've been working on? No, it just uh, gets dropped into my lap. So <laughs> I, I, I enjoy uh, every opportunity that comes my way. So Now, most adult film stars don't have very long careers. It seems like you've been doing this successfully forever. What do you think is the secret to your longevity as a star? Uh, I started the, in the adult industry uh, actually in 1999. I was uh, inducted into the AVN Hall of Fame uh, in 2009. So yes, 10 years. Wow. Yay. I opened my own production company, Terravision Inc., uh, in 2003. I've done, yeah, lots of magazines. You know, I think it's just that, you know, I'll tell you three things. Have integrity. Uh, that's the number one thing. I've worked, actually, for 17 years, not just in the adult industry, but I started modeling when I was 13. So, wow. yeah. And we understand you've written a book. Tell our viewers about it. I have. My novel is called Sinner Takes All. It's uh, from Penguin, Gotham Penguin. Uh, it came out January of 2010, and it's available on my official website, tarapatrick.com, amazon.com, Borders. Um, it's the story of my life, but not the only story. I have two more books coming out uh, until 2013. Wow. So. And finally, Tara Patrick, what are you mad as hell about? I am mad as hell that I am not president, but if um, it's not going to be me, I say we should have Susie Orman, the wits, and Jessica Simpson, the dits. I think our country would be in fantastic shape. And if I could just uh, maybe be in charge of, um, I don't know, decorating the <laughs> Oval Office. I'm not mad about anything. I'm a very happy, positive, upbeat person. So it's all good. There you go. Philosophy from Tara Patrick. Tara, thank you so much for visiting us with today. From the crazy floor at GlamourCon 50, this is Frank Anthony for Telesystems Television Network. Bye for now. 
Hi everyone, from the floor of GlamourCon 50, this is Frank Anthony for the Telesystems Television Network. Well, you've seen her on the E! Channel's Girls Next Door, also on the Tom Leica Show and Howard Stern. Our guest today is the one and the only Miss Stacy Burke. Stacy, thank you so much for being with us today. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me. You probably didn't recognize me with the blue hair. We I'm like smart. the blue haired look. It's, it's kind of an alien look and we like it. It's a Smurf Lady Gaga look. Although before it was a Stacy Burke look, now it's Lady Gaga. Oh, wow. Now, I've been coming to GlamourCon for years, and you are just a mainstay of the show. I mean, it oh, wouldn't be GlamourCon without you. Oh, How do you like interacting with your fans like this at shows like this? I love it. I love GlamourCon. I love, like, uh, conventions all the time because uh, you get to meet and interact with your fans. That they come, like, so far to come see you, and it's so flattering. And, of course, energy level like me, I just like going and, and doing things and stuff like that. And it's nice to see the person on the other side of the mouse. Now, besides her modeling career, Stacy's a very, very successful actress. I have a little surprise for you. Uh -oh. One of your co-stars gave me a copy of your most famous movie project ever. I want famous? you to tell me, yes, their best famous movie project. Tell me the name of the movie. A uh, Bikini A Go-Go, maybe? There we go. We have a Bikini A Go-Go, and we're done. <laughs> Stacy's going to autograph it for me. Now, Stacy, that's turned into a whole series. Do you realize there's what? now 12, 12 A Go-Go movies, and you oh were in the God. very first one? For those of you who haven't seen Stacy and Bikini A Go-Go, they feature on the Cinemex channel all the time. Don't miss out on that. She is wonderful. Okay. Well, they changed it for uh, our cable. It's called Curse of the Erotic Tiki. Curse of the Erotic Tiki. You know I think why? I missed that. Because the demographic, they, the, the Bikini of Go Go didn't do good for like if they, people would just scam by it. Curse of the Erotic, they heard curse. A lot of people like the word curse. A lot of people like the name erotic. So they used, you know, that. So go figure. Hi, everyone. From the floor of GlamourCon 50, this is Frank Anthony for Telesystems Television Net Network. Our guest today is Claire St. Clair. Playboy Magazine's missed October 2010. Claire, thank you so much for being with us today. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Give our viewers a little idea of how you became Playboy Magazine's Miss October 2010. Um, I was actually uh, getting um, painted by Olivia de Berardini's, who's a pinup artist, and she does one pinup a month for Playboy. And she introduced me to Hugh Hefner. And um, I went up to the mansion on a Sunday. He asked for my name and number, and the next day I got a call from Playboy to test shoot, and the rest is history. Wow. Yeah. We heard that right now you are the number one pinup model in the world. That must just make you feel fantastic. Um, it's really exciting. I mean, I don't think there's there's um, very many people doing it anymore. I think that Dita Von Tees kind of does the glamour-esque 1940s, 1930s style work. And I'm really taking over for the 50s and 60s, and I'm ecstatic about it because I love those eras. Yeah. So bringing any of that vintage style back is it's a privilege and it's an honor for me. Now we understand you've been doing some work in Las Vegas. Tell our viewers all about that. Um, I've been I'm doing MGM Crazy Horse at um, Crazy Horse Paris. It's at MGM Grand, and I was offered. Uh, a four-time contract a year, so to do it four times, uh, once per season, for a week. And um, I'm not sure if I'm going to be signing that contract uh, due to conflicting things with my Playmate contract, but I did recently become the sponsor of the Betty Page store, which is wow. exciting, and I'm actually wearing it, her clothing line right now, and that's awesome. That we, we have a little finishing segment, right I'm mad as hell, first. and we want to know, Claire yeah. St. Clair, what are you mad as hell about? Um, I'm mad as hell about uh, the fitting of my bra right now, it's jabbing into my back. <laughs>